All right, so these are my problems with NBA 2K25. Now, I think this is going to be very agreed upon. I don't think people are going to disagree with this list of things that I have an issue with. But before I share them with you, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We're on the road to 13,000 subs. I'd really appreciate you guys could help me get there. You know, make sure you leave a like, comment um, down below. Give me, actually, tell me what you think about it. And then share the video as well. So let's just get right into it. I don't want to waste too much time. So I wrote down for number one. And by the way, it's not like, you know, ranking. I'm just like giving you four different points. So the first thing I wrote down was updates didn't fix the game. They patched things that weren't broken and they didn't fix things that needed to be fixed. So that's one thing. And then I wrote down the timing of updates was horrendous. Now that's going to be um, for the later on the video, but you know, I'll get back to it in a second. But talking about the game not being fixed from the updates and things getting patched that were not broken. For example, the dashboarding thing was not fixed. That needed fixing. They didn't fix it, right? the vc methods in my career um those got fixed as well to the point where they're unplayable you can't grind vc anymore you either have to buy vc or not which will lead to the second point and i'll get back to it but that was something they did not they did not need to fix and they still ended up ruining it and destroying it so i'll get back to that point but another thing that i want to talk about is like interior defense for me is worse than it was before i don't know maybe i'm i'm a casual player so that's probably where i'm coming from if you're a comp player, you probably have a different perspective of this. But from my experience, I have a 7-3 Wemby build with like a 94 block, 89 interior, and a 92 close shot or 91 close shot or something like that. I had plays where I make some ridiculous layups and I'm like, yo, how did I make that? But then I look and I'm like, okay, the player guarding me is 7 foot. I'm 7-3, high difference. They probably don't have great interior. Okay, makes sense. Now, I still think they should get a slight contest, but you know, that's beside the point. Now, the second thing is there's times where I pump fake people out of their shoes. They literally jump from one side of the rim to the other, right? And then I go up with my opposite hand away from the rim, away from everybody else. There's no one around me. And I try to make a layup, but because the guard came in and was near me, it makes me miss. It's or if the center is like three feet away and he's on the other side of the rim, him pressing triangle activates a ghost contest for some odd reason. And I miss wide open layups. That doesn't make sense. It's not consistent. That's something that they try to fix, but ended up breaking. I have no idea. Now, there's other little things, and I, I guess they're like more VC related, but I'm sure that gameplay issues with that people, you guys could probably come up with your own list, but those are these few examples that I came up with off the top. I don't want to get too in depth with everything, but coming back to the last point, which was the timing of updates was horrendous. I think that is a huge one and I'll come back to it. But going on to the second point that I wrote, it says, in my opinion, the game is designed to maximize the revenue from microtransactions, which I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. It says, for example, the build system is a joke. Cap breakers were made to give such a competitive edge to those who make builds designed for them that it will force players to make new builds every time cap breakers are unlocked. And this is true. I don't think anybody can disagree with this. You know what I mean? If you look at a lot of the five nines, there are builds designed to have cap breakers so they could go all the way to 99 steel, 99, you know, three point shot and a 99 perimeter or something like that. Right. Let's just for example. And that's all you can only get that with cap breakers. But before you get that, you're unlocking your first set of cap breakers and your second set of cap breakers. And the best build you could possibly make with those is different than what you could with three cap breakers. Now, especially with competitive players, if you want an edge, you have to keep doing that because you're not going to be able to play the game and compete with other players. I mean, you probably could because you're good enough at the game, but you're going to want every single thing to help you compete, especially when you're playing for money, right? If you're playing pro M or you're playing in tournaments, you have to go and every little bit of advantage or help you can get, you need, right? So, and I'll, I'll come back to that in, at the end as well, because I have another point about that. So that is true. And also I wanted to take this point to kind of tie it back to the number one, uh, point that I made, which was the updates didn't fix the game, that they patched things that weren't broken. They destroyed every single VC method in the game. Now, no money spent is basically impossible. They made it war This is the worst year ever in any 2K I've ever played with VC methods. There were some great VC methods, and they literally took them. They didn't just nerf them. No, nah, no. Nah, they destroyed them. They made them in combo. I'm telling you right now, they're useless. You know what I mean? There are some decent, I think current gen has one, but I'm hearing that that got nerfed as well, where it has like, like a delay on it. And then, you know, there's extra things you have to deal with. So just a joke. I think 
you know, the point being that they made the game designed, in my opinion, obviously, to maximize the revenue does hurt the game. It's not made to be the greatest game, which is going to go back uh, to game uh, point number three now, which is that, first of all, and this has to do with, like, the game and playing the game and having fun. But first of all, it says, and I wrote it down, it says, there is too many game modes that is splitting the community into too many sections, making it hard to get games unless you're playing with a squad. Now, that hurts casual players. If you have a squad, it doesn't affect you as much, but it still hurts you a little bit. And there is not a good alternative in 2K in case you're burned out, for example, or you you want to try something else. And the biggest alternative was my team. My team has sucked the past two years. It has sucked for a while, but last year was terrible, and I'm hearing this year is not good. My NBA eras, that was fun. It's good for videos, but if you're doing it by yourself, it's not necessarily the greatest thing in the world. Uh, play now online used to be fun. I don't, I don't think how many, I don't know how many people play that anymore. WNBA, let's be honest, there's no reason for you to play it. Like there's literally no reason. The gameplay feels different. The builds are different. Everything. There's a lot of things with the WM. It's cool. You want to play it a couple times, but there's not. It's not. You're not gonna play 200 hours worth of WNBA. You're not. You know. And so that would be like my biggest complaint uh, in terms of that. Now going back to the too many game modes, more specific to my career, it's that there are, and I kid you not, and I, I'll name them: Proving Grounds, Park, Theater, Rec, um, Pro Am. And then the event center, which is always having the new game mode. And then you have the starting five. And then now you have the the special DLC game mode, which is crazy, by the way. The fact that they dropped DLC is nasty work, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's terrible. I haven't played it, but I don't, I don't even want to play it. Um, so you have all those game modes. And by the way, each of these game modes has different games you can play. You can park, you can play twos, you can play threes. Pro theater, you can play 1v1, you can play threes, you can play twos. You can play no squad. You can play squad. Event center, same thing. Uh, rec, you have solo, and then you have squad. And then you have proving grounds, which has 1v5 through 5v5. And then pro which has... Oh, I forgot to mention pro Proem pro has 3v3 versus 5v5. That is too many game modes for, for the rec. I mean, for the rec. For the my career. I just think it's ridiculous. I'm struggling to get games. The only way I get games is when I stream and I'm playing with a squad. That's a big problem, but that's another one. Now, going to the fourth point, and I think this one is true, and I think everyone's going to agree with, especially if you played other games or you, like, especially if you have a PC and your PC can play games at a high FPS. But I wrote down that the game is not as smooth as, smooth as it can be, especially when compared to other games like Black Ops 6, for example, especially PC games for those who have PCs that can play at high FPS, right? Now, I'm saying this because from my knowledge, and this is from people who play 2K on PC, they cap it at 60 FPS. Um, that's not the best frame rate. I mean, it's decent. 60 is okay. But you're playing PC games at 200, 150, 300, whatever you can get. And going to 60, it's tough. It's a difficult thing to adjust. It's like going from 4K to 1080p. Even though 1080p used to be really good, there's a big difference between it. You know what I mean? And your eyes can tell you right away there's a huge difference. So that's one of the problems that I have with it. Now, I do think that the problem with the game being, like, you know, choppy, I guess you would say, started with uh, when the city was first added. Now, it's not as bad this year as it was in previous years. They definitely toned it down. But that is another complaint that I have. And then I was going to also point out that going back to the first point where I said the timing of these was horrendous, um, it had to do with the heavy competition that there is in the game, which is hurting the community, making it harder to get games, which makes it harder to enjoy the game. For example, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, competition. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, competition. Undisputed, competition. And those are just a couple games that came out this month. We're not even talking about the games that are coming out next month or the other games that came out this month that I don't have, but other people play. We're not talking about the games that are coming out in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, any of that time period. You know what I mean? GTA 6 is coming out. It's very important for 2K to make a high-quality game, and they're not able to deliver. And I made a video before 2K came out, and I think I said... Well, I think it was titled, Will NBA 2K25 Be Great? And I think one of the points that I made on that video was that they had a lot of competition that I expected them to succeed because if they did not, they would fall and they would lose a lot of their fan base and it would be a horrible year and even next year would be hurt by it. And they did not deliver. You know what I mean? Could they ther theoretically fix it? Yes, but are they? No. Because A, they're not going to remove game modes, right? They're not going to give people reasons to play. I kid you not, it was double a rep in the wreck throughout the weekend i try to play solo rec couldn't get any games all the casual players right now are on call of duty 
right? Casual players make the game fun because they provide the games when nobody else wants to comp players play each other. But like in the casual setting, you know what I mean? Like it's hard to get games when half the community is on another console or another not console, but another game. And so, yeah, those are a couple issues that I have. I'm trying to think of any other before I end the video so I don't forget. All right, so this is, this is point number five. I wrote down the inability to appeal the community in a reasonable manner, which is to be fair, which to be fair is a difficult thing to do, but not something attempted by 2K. Now, in my opinion, it is very easy, right, in my mind, to appeal to everybody. But that's because I'm looking at it from a different perspective. Everybody has their own perspective. From my perspective, now I guess I'll share it with you. Most casual players would be satisfied if it was easy to make VC and they could make multiple builds so that they could get, have fun trying multiple builds, right? Com players will have fun if the game works properly and they're able to play the game and have fun where it doesn't feel like anything is broken, but they're able to play and have a lot of control over the game. You can do a lot of things, but I'm just saying like there's certain things you can do in my mind. Now, I know it's hard, but I just wanted to put that point there because yes, it's hard, but it doesn't mean they don't deserve criticism for it because criticism can be good. You know what I mean? If you guys criticize my YouTube videos, you know, do they hurt a little bit, but I take it as advice. So I appreciate that. So anyways, that's the video, guys. I didn't want to ramble on too long, so I actually cut down a lot of what I was going to say. So God bless you guys. Jesus loves you. Remember that he paid for your sins with his own blood. So get safe, get safe soon, and I hope you guys enjoy this little video. Goodbye.